Hello there and welcome. Today's video will finally be about my Ember build. I know Ember is probably one of the most popular party members personality wise, so this build was a long time overdue. With this build, your Ember as a witch will be able to highly support your party through the aid of very powerful hex abilities. Not only that, but we also get to debuff the enemy with quite a lot of powerful spells and even inflict extreme amounts of single target damage perfect for tough enemies and bosses and of course, respectable area of effect damage as well. So it can make for a very versatile build that covers many bases. Alright, so Ember comes at level 3 with both point blank shot and also precise shot feats, thus cementing her role as a ray caster or a ranged attacker really. Although in Ember's case, I would not bother attacking with ranged weapons at all. Instead, just go with spells or of course hexes. And speaking about hexes, she also starts with Slumber Hex and also Vulnerability Curse. The Slumber Hex will be very useful, especially during the early game, as you can basically shut an enemy down for at least 3 rounds or more based on Ember's switch level. For the mid to late game, well, the difficulty class won't be that high, but you can certainly make it work through some debuffs if you want. Meanwhile, the Vulnerability Curse Hex can also be very powerful. If you have watched my Kinetisys video, then you know this has great synergy with a Fire Kinetisys, especially during the early game, when you don't have access to the Ascended Element Mythic ability yet. This way, by just casting Vulnerability Curse, you can make any of the early game demons vulnerable to energy, meaning they won't get their fire damage resistance anymore, for example, for a single round, which is more than enough to cast, let's say, your fire spells or abilities. So let's get started on the build progression. This will be a full 20 levels of Stigmatized Witch, Ember's unique witch subclass. At level 4, we will already have our first ability point increase, and it will, of course, go into Charisma to increase Ember's spellcasting prowess, and in the case of Witch, this will also increase her the Hex difficulty class, so very useful. As far as skills for Ember, I would say you can go with the ones she already starts out with, so Knowledge Arcana, Persuasion, and Use Magic Device. Of course, if you already have a character invested in Persuasion, then you can pick something else. She even has points in Lore Religion, which is also a class skill for her, although in this case I would rather leave it for, let's say, a Cleric like Sociel. And amusingly enough, she can also get quite high perception because of two boosts she gets. The first is a plus two ratio from Kin Senses, as Ember is an elf, and the second, a plus two one typed from her Raven Familiar. So be sure to pick perception as well if you want and don't have a character already capable of doing it. Now, at level four, we also get our first hex pick. Ember, as a witch, gets quite a lot of hexes through the whole game. I would say your first hex choice here is going to depend on difficulty. If you are on let's say normal or core, then I would definitely go with Evil Y first. Evil Y is by far one of the best hexes, if not the best abilities in the whole game really. Until level 8, it's going to give the enemy of your choice a minus 2 penalty in either armor class, attack rolls or saving throws basically. All of these 3 effects are very powerful, but usually you will want to use either the armor class reduction or saving throws penalty. This way you can make hitting enemies with high armor class easy, or also make it easier for them to be debuffed with, with spells and such. Meanwhile, at level 8 onwards, the penalty will increase to minus 4, which is very high. And just like Vulnerability Curse, the best part about this hex is that even if the enemy saves, they will still get the debuff for one round, so perfect for hard and also unfair, where enemies have higher saving throws by default. Also, do note that even if it only lasts one round, if the enemy saves, later on through the aid of the Keko hex, you will be able to extend this one round duration by another round, so long as you spend a move action with Kekko, as I will show you later on. Now with that being said about Evil Eye, there is also another powerful hex that you can pick this early in the game. In this case, Protective Luck. As you might know, hexes are basically infinite uses, the difference is that some of them can only be cast once per enemy. Protective Luck will basically buff your characters so that the enemy has to roll twice whenever attempting to target them with any effect that requires an attack roll and then pick the worst result. Honestly, this hex is simply amazing when it comes to negating damage and increasing survivability. After all, it can turn hits that would hit you into misses or critical hits into normal hits. By default, when you get it, this hex will only last a single round. However, it's going to increase by another round at level 8 and level 16. And the best part is that, just like Evil Eye, you can also extend this hex with Kekko. The difference being, because you can pre-buff with protective luck, you can also extend it basically 
for an infinite amount of time by just spamming Kekko, as I will also show you later on in the section on how to play Ember as a Witch. So to put it simple, if you are playing on hard and unfair where enemies tend to have a lot more attack bonus so they can hit you with ease, be sure to pick Protective Luck earlier instead of Evil Eye, otherwise go with Evil Eye. At level 4 we also get our first level 2 spell pick, and Ember as a Witch is a spontaneous caster, much like a sorcerer, so she will always be able to cast any of the spells she has learned. The best one for early game is certainly Glitter Dust, a very powerful area of effect debuff that first can utterly bypass the enemy's spell resistance, so perfect for demons in the early game, and also inflicts a very nasty blind debuff. Blind will give enemies a 50% chance of missing with their attacks, which is very powerful, reduce their armor class and also make them flat-footed, so overall a very powerful spell. At level 5, we have our first feat. In this case, be sure to go with spell penetration, as this ember will be focused on using spells against the enemy. And most of the spells we are going to cast, especially the damage ones, will require a spell penetration roll, so we want to increase our spell penetration as high as possible. We get another level 1 spell pick here, and I would go with Enlarge Person unless you have another character capable of casting it. Enlarge is one of the best buffs in the game, especially during the early game. It can not only increase your weapon dice damage, but also give you reach, and reach, as you might already know, is very powerful because it lets your characters attack from safety behind, let's say, your tanks or pets. This can actually give you reach even for weapons that don't have reach by default, like let's say a longsword. For another level 2 spell, I would go with Bomb Shaker. Do note that she gains the very powerful Scorching Ray spell for free because of her Oracle Curse. And this will basically be the level 2 spell that you use for damage as a Caster Ember, especially from level 4 onwards, when you gain 2 rays, for a maximum of 3 rays at level 11. Bone Shaker is just here to offer you an alternative, especially if the enemy is, let's say, resistant to fire. The best part about Scorching Ray is that it doesn't have a save, so the damage will always be full. Meanwhile, Bomb Shaker does have a save, a Fortitude one in this case, so keep that in mind. At level 6 we have another Hex. Now, if you picked Protective Luck before, because you are on Hard and on Unfair, this is when you pick the Kekko Hex. Because I picked Evil Eye before, for, as an example, I'll be going with Protective Luck now. We also have our first level 3 spells, and there are two choices here basically. The first one is Heroism, as it's a very powerful buff, however, you might already have a character that can cast heroism, such as a Scald, a Bard, or Nenyo even. In this case, go with Stinking Cloud first. As you might already know from Pathfinder and Kingmaker, Stinking Cloud used to be one of the most powerful debuffs, as it's a lingering area of effect spell that will attempt to inflict a very powerful nauseated condition on the enemies. Nauseated enemies won't be able to do anything besides move. The main issue with the spell numbering in Wrath of the Righteous is that, well, most of the enemies, the tough enemies at least, are demons, and demons are immune to poison, so they won't be subject to this spell. However, do note that you also face quite a lot of cultists, and cultists don't have poison immunity, so this spell can be useful during the early game, especially during chapter 1 and chapter 2, where you fight a lot of cultists. For your level 7 feet peak as Ember, be sure to get greater spell penetration, and also the unbreakable heart spell. This spell is very useful because it's one of the few spells that can actually remove confusion. For another level 2 spell pick, go with False Life to give Ember an extra boost to her hit points. Now as far as level 3 spells, you can also pick something like Ray of Exhaustion. This ray will attempt to exhaust the enemy, meaning a minus 6 penalty to dexterity and also strength. The best part is that even if the enemy successfully saves against it, they will become fatigued instead for a minus 2 penalty to strength and dexterity. So this spell can be useful when it comes to debuffing single targets. Another interesting choice is the Speed Venom spell. Yes, it's also poison, meaning it's not going to affect demons, but for certain dangerous cultist enemies, this spell can be quite powerful. Ember will Speed Venom as a ranger touch attack. And the best part about it is that the save is only partial, so first, if the Venom hits the enemy, and because Ember is focused on ranger touch attacks, chances are she will hit the enemy, the enemy will, will be automatically inflicted with blindness for one round without a saving throw. This is the best part about this really, because as I've mentioned before, blindness is a very nasty debuff. The second part will try to affect the enemy with poison, which is not really what we're here for, and this is the part that actually has a saving throw. Blindness, even for just a single round, is a death sentence on the enemy. My personal choice would be this instead of Rear of Exhaustion, for level 8, another increase in charisma, and in this case, also the Kekko Hex, so we can extend both our evil eye during combat 
as a move action and also the very powerful protective look. Now at level 8, Amber will also get access to her first level 4 spells. My favorite pick here is Enervation. Enervation is a very powerful debuff that will inflict the enemy with up to 4 negative levels as a ranged touch attack. As you might already know from having negative levels inflicted on your character, they make for an extremely powerful and very annoying debuff, even on the enemies. The best part about this is that it doesn't have a save, so the enemy will always be hit with the negative level penalty. Negative levels also stack, so you can keep casting this spell to remove enemy levels, for penalties to attack bonus, hit points and saving throws. Now do remember that we can get access to maximize metamagic spell rods very early during the game, one of them the most powerful one, coming as soon as chapter 3 starts, as I will show you later on during the gear section. With that metamagic rod, this spell will always inflict the maximum of 4 negative levels, that you can even increase to minus 6. Now do remember that some of the enemies in the game are actually immune to negative levels, but most of them aren't, so whenever casting this spell, be sure to check the enemies to see if they are immune or not. For your level 9 feat, be sure to pick metamagic and bolster spell. Bolster, unlike maximize and empower, is a very powerful metamagic effect that we cannot get from metamagic rods at all, this is why we actually get it as a feat. And it is going to give a boost to damage to either our single target or area of effect spells. Not only that, but because Ember is, is a spontaneous caster, Bolster spell will also increase the amount of spells you can cast, such as for example, the Scorching Ray spell which you will get both at level 2 and level 3. Your other level 2 choice is up to you really. Because my Ember also has Perception, I'll go with Fine Traps. As for another level 3 spell pick, Remove Disease. It is true that you can use the very powerful heal spell to remove disease without a check, but heal only comes later at level 11 for clerics or level 12 for oracles like Darren. So it helps to have Ember access to this earlier before you can get that spell. For another level 4 spell, my favorite is Death Ward. Death Ward is one of the best buffs in the game, especially for a spontaneous caster who can cast it whenever they want, without the need to prepare the spell. A lot of enemies in Wrath of the Righteous, mostly undead, love spamming negative levels on your party, sometimes from an area of effect spell and even without a save. With Death Ward you can actually become immune to that, so very useful. For your level 10 hacks, be sure to pick Fortune Hacks. Fortune is also one of the best hexes in the whole game, if not best buffs even. It works in a similar way as Protective Luck, except in this case, you will buff any of your characters, so that whenever they make an ability check, attack roll, saving throw or skill check even, they will roll twice and take the best result. There are no words to say how useful this is really, it can highly increase your chances of hitting the enemy, as it's going to apply to every single one of your attacks, for the whole duration, never mind highly increasing the chances of you making a saving throw as well. Now the best thing about this is that just like with protective luck, you can also basically extend the duration indefinitely by just using Keko. So be sure not to waste time using fortune during battle, what you want to do is to pre-buff your characters with it before battle starts and then just spam Keko until you increase the duration to any amount you want. Now the difference between this and Protective Luck is that while Protective Luck has no limitations whatsoever, Fortune Hex will only be able to cast once on a character per rest, but because we can just keep extending it, this limitation isn't going to matter that much. Now at level 10, Ember will also get access to level 5 spells and most of them aren't really useful, at least in my opinion. Wrecking Ray has some uses as it can inflict quite a lot of strength and dexterity ability damage, but at this point, I would much rather use something like Scorching Ray for single target damage, or the much more powerful Enervation for negative levels. Mindfall can also be used, so if you have characters focused on debuffing the enemies with spells that target will. Now, as you might already know from my Cave Fang video, this spell can be one of the strongest in the whole game because of how crazy powerful it is, really. But do remember that if you want your Ember to be using Cave Fangs, then you will need a Paladin like Scylla, to cast Mark of Justice on the enemy. The Baleful Polymorph spell can, can have a somewhat amusing use really. You can turn even bosses like the Demon Lords into, into very wimpy dogs. But do note that this does require a save, so you will have to debuff the enemy a lot before it's going to hit them, especially on hard and unfair. For our generic pick here, I would go with Cave Fangs because of how crazy this spell can be with the proper setup. Now at level 11, be sure to pick Spell Focus and then Evocation. We aren't actually getting this to increase our Evocation difficulty class really. The best Evocation spells don't offer a save for half damage, 
like the very powerful Scorching Ray and of course the infamous, extremely powerful Hellfire Ray, which is what we are here for. The reason we pick Spell Focus Evocation is to later, at level 13, give us access to Spell Specialization and Hellfire Ray. Starting from level 12, Amber will be able to learn the very powerful Hellfire Ray spell. As you might already know, this is basically the best single target damage spell in the whole game, capable of dealing extreme amounts of damage to the enemy. The way it works is simple. You will fire a ray that deals up to 15d6, based on your caster level, and for every 4 caster levels you have beyond level 11, you will gain another ray for a maximum of 3 rays at level 19. Now this spell only becomes really good starting from level 15 basically, which is when we get access to 2 rays for 30d6 damage, which is huge. So the reason we pick Spell Focus Evocation is so that at level 13 we will get Spell Specialization and Hellfire Ray. That feat will increase our Hellfire Ray caster level by a plus 2, so instead of just 13, we will cast Hellfire Ray as if we were level 15, thus allowing us to get 2 powerful rays as soon as level 13 for maximum damage. We also get another level 2 spell pick here, and it can be anything really. I'll go with Cure Moderate Wounds, because at the very least it's always going to be useful if you need it. As for level 3 spells, the Rage spell to give your characters a very rare plus 2 morale bonus to Strength and Constitution. But do remember that while under the Rage effect, your characters will not be able to cast spells at all, and they also get a minus 2 penalty to Armor class. But considering most melee characters aren't really going to be casting spells, they will just attack, this can be useful. As for another level 4 spell pick, False Life Greater. This actually stacks with the normal False Life, thus giving Ember quite a lot of extra hit points to increase her survivability. For another level 5 spell, I would go with Mind Fog. Now your level 12 Hex pick is a given. Beast's Gift. This is an extremely powerful Hex, capable of giving any of your party members, pets included, an extra bite attack. Now the best thing about bite attacks is that they will stack with one another. This doesn't mean that you can actually keep casting beast gifts on the same character for multiple bite attacks, however, if you have another source of a bite attack, it's going to stack with the one from beast gift, such as, let's say, beast totem from scald. This will translate into an extra attack per round for every single one of your characters, which is always useful, and especially useful for characters focused on bite attacks, like the dog and wolf pet. As with most hexes, this actually has infinite uses, so even if it does have a duration of 1 minute per witch level, you can simply recast Beast's Gift once the effect wears off. This can also be very useful for characters that have sneak attack, as though your damage with the bite attack probably won't be that high, a base of 1d8 damage, your sneak attack damage will apply to this bite attack, so keep that in mind. At level 12 we also get our first level 6 spell picks. Because we are going to be using the very special Salamander Ring that I will show you later on in the gear section, Amber will already learn Hellfire Ray for free, so we don't have to pick that. I would certainly go with something like Greater Heroism, unless you already have a character that can cast it, such as Nanio, or in this case, my Scald Mercenary. Otherwise, be sure to pick the Spell Magic Greater to help you remove the buffs of certain boss enemies. Now, as I've mentioned before, level 13 is when we pick Spell Specialization and Hellfire Ray to increase its caster level by 2. As far as another level 4 spell pick, be sure to go with Dimension Door. The main reason is that, at this point in the game level 13, we are close to hitting chapter 4. And chapter 4 has many special areas with unique loot, a lot of it missable, that can only be accessed if your characters use the Dimension Door spell. Your other level 5 spell pick can be anything really. I'll go with Baleful Porn Morph, just for fun. Meanwhile, be sure to go with something like Eye Bite for another level 6 spell. The best part about Eye Bite is that, as a swift action, you will be able to inflict the enemy with second effect for a minus 2 penalty to attack rolls and also saving throws without a save, which is what makes it so good. By level 14, we have picked most of the best hacks already. So I would go with something like Regenerative Sinu, as it can be a very powerful way of restoring ability damage, in this case 4 points from 2 ability scores, so very high, and it even grants your characters a fast healing, which basically means regeneration, of 5 hit points per round, equal to half the witch's levels, basically more than 50 damage healing. It does have a limit, however, in that you can only affect a creature with it once per rest. Now, since we have the spell specialization feat, every single level now, from 13 onwards, is going to keep asking us what spell to specialize in, and of course, we're going to pick Hellfire Ray. 
At level 14 we also have access to our first level 7 spells, and for which there are actually quite a lot of powerful ones here. The main ones being Heal, Ice Body, and Legendary Proportions. Your first level 7 spell pick should depend on what spells your other party members can cast. For example, you can pick Heal here, but at this point in the game both Socio and Darren will already be able to cast Heal, even Camellia as well. So you might save your heal pick with Ember for later on. Legendary Proportions on the other hand is basically a massive upgrade over Enlarged Person. But as I said before, both Nenio and Camellia will also be able to cast it, so keep that in mind. The last spell pick is Ice Body, a very powerful personal only buff. With this spell, Ember will become immune to quite a lot of stuff, the most important ones being ability damage and of course critical hits. I would say overall the most uh, versatile pick here would be heal, because of course it can restore you quite a lot of hit points and also remove a lot of nasty status ailments. Now for a level 15 feat, I would go with Improved Initiative. Because Ember can do quite a lot of single target damage, it is in our best interest to have her act first before the enemy can react, as to defeat them as fast and as soon as possible. And by level 15, we will already have a very powerful Hellfire Ray. You can of course pick this earlier, which will also help Ember inflict hexes such as Slumber before the enemy can react. But I find my Ember feat selection up to level 13 at least is very solid, so I have a hard time finding a feat here to replace with Improved Initiative. For more level 5 spells, you can go with anything. I'll pick Feeble Mind here. As for another level 6 spells, well, Stone to Flash can be somewhat useful. After all, you won't have to buy scrolls to remove petrification from your characters. As for another level 7 spells, go with either Ice Body or Legendary Proportions. Because I already have Camellia who can cast Legendary Proportions, I will go with Ice Body to increase Ember survivability. Another Charisma increase at level 16 of course. And as far as your 16 hacks, go with Ice Plant. This will give Ember a plus 2 natural bonus to armor class that will stack with all other sources of natural armor bonus such as from Amulets, Scald Rage or Legendary Proportions even. The reason I picked this so late for Ember is that as a ranged character, chances are most of the times the enemies will not attack her, preferring to focus on your frontline instead. At level 16 we also gain our first level 8 spells, and overall, well, I'd say the witch choice here is pretty poor. You can go with something like Stormbolts that can inflict some decent area of effect damage that only targets enemies, and even attempt to stun them for a single round. The problem is, it deals lightning damage, and all of the demons in the game are basically immune to lightning. There are ways to overcome that, however, such as through the Devouring Lust Metamagic Rod, that will change the damage one wholly. You can also go with the very powerful Frightful Aspect buff, but I would rather save this for frontline characters such as Sociel for example. Besides that we also have Mind Blank to highly increase the saving throws of our allies against mind affecting spells and effects. I think Storm Bulls would be the safest choice here, but remember you can also get the spell for free if you are using the Thunderlord braces that you can find in the Blackwater dungeon. For our level 17 feat, be sure to go with Improved Critical and then Ray. This is a way to increase our damage with Hellfire Ray even further, as Ember will now get critical hits on a 19 or 20 roll instead of just 20, and when combined with the very powerful Fortune Hex ability, we can increase that even further. And trust me, a critical from Hellfire Ray is going to hit the enemy for massive amounts of damage. Also, by this point, at level 17, our Hellfire Ray will already be at maximum power, so 3 rays, each capable of 15d6 damage for a massive 45d6 from just a single spell against a single target. For another level 7 spell, go with Legendary Proportions. As for more 8 spells, Frightful Aspect. As I said before, level 8 witch spells are rather poor. And remember, Ember will get access to Hellfire Ray on both level 6 from the Ring and also level 7 from her curse. So you can easily use your level 8 spells with Bolstered Hellfire Ray, for example or the very powerful Firestorm spell, also granted by Free from the Red Salamander Ring. At level 18, we gain access to our first Grand Hex. Honestly, they are mostly kinda disappointing. I think overall, the most useful one here would be Life Giver, as it gives Ember the ability to resurrect any one of your allies for free once per day, so very useful. At 18, we also get our first level 9 spells. There are a few different choices here. Be sure to pick Heroic Invocation, unless you already have a character capable of casting it like Darren. Otherwise, for your first pick, go with Foresight, 
A very powerful buff that lasts for a long time and gives your characters a plus 2 insight bonus to armor class and reflects a very rare type and even prevents them from ever being caught flat-footed. Now at level 19, I would go with something like Greater Spell Focus and Evocation, after all we already have the normal spell focus. And Ember does have a few decent area of effect damage spells that she can use. You might wonder why I don't pick the Shake It Off feat with Ember. And the reason is that, well, as a ranged character and a spellcaster, she will be most of the times away from most of my other party members, so chances are she won't get close enough to benefit from the bonus it gives you. As for another level 8 spell, you can pick anything you want really, but most of them aren't going to be that useful. I'll just pick some monster 8 so you can at least use a summon if you want to take the enemy's attention away. Your order level 9 spell picks are also somewhat disappointing, especially if you already have someone that can cast heroic invocation. I suppose you can go with something like Mind Blank Communal, as a very powerful party-wide buff with long duration. Now we are at last, at level 20, and of course, our last ability point will go into Charisma. Your last hex honestly doesn't really matter much, as most of the hexes left are rather disappointing. I suppose Animal Servant can be one of the best ones, as just like Baleful Polymorph, it's going to attempt to turn the enemy into a dog. But in the case of Animal Servant, it targets Will, which tends to be lower than Fortitude for Baleful Polymorph. As for your last level 9 spell, you can go with Summon Monster 9 for more summons. Alright, so let's talk now about Ember's Mythic Progression. Your first choice is easy, Ascendant Element and then Fire. As this Ember is a build focused on very powerful fire spells that she will gain either from this Red Salamander Ring for free, or also her oracle curse like Scorching Ray. So we certainly want our fire spells dealing full damage even against demons. Your Mythic Rank 2 choice is also simple. Mythic Spell Penetration, as all of the spells I mentioned do have to go through the enemy's spell resistance first. Mythic Rank 3 is when I would pick Abundant Casting to highly increase the castings per day Ember has. Now, by Mythic Rank 4, I would go with Sorcerer's Reflex. This can be a very powerful ability for spellcasters, especially spontaneous spellcasters. So the first spell you cast in battle, this isn't per round, it's basically only the first spell during the battle, is going to be cast as a swift action, so long as it is at least two levels lower than the maximum level of spells you can cast. The reason I like picking this early is so Ember can use spells such as Enervation and Scorching Ray as swift actions, as they are just level 2 and 4 spells. You can also choose to pick this at level 6 instead, but Mythic 6 comes way later than Mythic 4, basically during the middle of chapter 4. Also, remember that Ember as a spontaneous caster, whenever she prepares a spell through meta magic, such as with Bolster spell, she will need to spend a full round action, but with Sorcerer's Reflex we can outright bypass that restriction by making it a swift action, at least for the first spell we cast during battle. This way we can cast two spells in the first round of battle for maximum damage or debuffing. For your level 5 mythic ability, improve it abundant casting. Now for mythic rank 6, by this point in the game we should already have access to improved initiative at level 15, so this is when I pick mythic improved initiative. As for mythic rank 7, greater abundant casting. Now your Mythic Rank 8 choice is also easy, improve at Critical and then Ray, to highly increase the damage of our Hellfire Ray on Critical Rehits for times 3 multiplier. Now we are at Mythic Rank 9, which will be our last one for all intents and purposes, and the choices now are up to you. You can for example pick Archmage Armor, if you want Ember to have as high armor class as possible, but as I mentioned before, because she is a ranged spellcaster basically, she won't really be getting hit that much, so I don't find this needed. Of course, you can also pick Last Stand to increase her survivability, especially during the late game, which is where we are at now. I imagine you can even go with something like Elemental Barrage if you want your Ember to alternate between Fire and Lightning spells, and remember she can get access to both with the Red Salamander Ring and the Thunder Lord Bracers for free. I think overall my favorite choices for this level would be either Last Stand or Favorite Metamagic and Bolstered, as to reduce the cost of our Bolstered spells by minus one, so basically a zero. The only issue with this is that you will actually have less access to some spells. If bolster spell actually costs a single spell level, you will then have access to the same spell like Hellfire Ray at level six and then also at level seven as a bolstered version. Honestly, I would just go with less ten to keep it safe. All right, so let us talk about Ember gear choices now. For the amulet slot, we can actually use the amulet of black and mirror to increase the difficulty class of our hex abilities such as Lumber Hex by plus one. 
Getting the Zemnet is also easy, all you have to do is talk to Horgus, starting from chapter 2 I believe. For the armor slot, I would go with Haramakis as they can not only give you armor class, without interfering with your dexterity bonus to AC, but they can also come with very powerful effects, such as in this case, the Haramaki of Divine Guidance will give Ember a plus 4 sacred bonus on all saving throws. And of course, they won't interfere with spellcasting. Now, when it comes to the robe slots, you have a few different choices. The best one overall for the late game is certainly going to be Call of the Fiery Things, as it's going to grant any of your fire spells an additional 4d6 damage. Because this applies per spell hit, in the case of Hellfire Ray, we are looking at 4d6 times 3, so 12d6 total extra damage. This does also has a debuff of minus 2 penalty to your AC, but frankly, because Ember is a ranged character, this isn't going to matter that much. Now, these special robes can only be found at Chapter 5 earliest, by getting the Crusade Relic called Fire of Baphomet, and enchanting it as a robe. Now, for the early game, you can also go with something like the Robe of Inevitability, for an extra plus 2 bonus to Spell Penetration, or the Robe of Determination for the same effect, basically. For the mid-game, or at least at Chapter 4, you have the Robes of Black and Drags, that will further enhance your difficulty class of your witch spells and hexes even by plus 1, stacking with the Amulet of Black and Mirror for a total of plus 2. Now as far as belts, the choice is simple, be sure to go with belts that increase both Ember's dexterity and constitution, as these are the stats that matter the most for her besides charisma. As far as gloves, my favorite ones are the gloves of Arcane Eradication, because of the very powerful plus 4 bonus to range at touch attack rolls. You can also go with something like the Gloves of Enduring Wizard, so that Ember can get a stacking bonus to temporary hit points whenever they cast a level 7 or higher spell. Now the boot slots, well as you might already know, there's frankly not really that many great boots in Wrath of the Righteous, the best ones usually being boots of freest rain for permanent freedom of movement. As far as the head slot, be sure to go with headbands that increase your charisma, in this case the ultimate one is of course Darkness Caress, but you can only get this very late during the game. Before that, at chapter 5, you can go with Zaur's Beauty. Besides that, any headband that increases charisma really for the early game and so on. Now the cloak slot is also simple as usual, cloaks of resistance. The higher the enchantments, the better, to increase our saving throws to the max. You can also go with the cloak of carnage to increase the difficulty class of your evocation spells by another plus two. The ring slots are very important for Ember, the most important one, of course, being the Red Salamander Ring, which will give her free access to a lot of powerful fire spells, both area and single targets, such as Fireball, Control Fireball, Fire Snake, and of course, the very powerful Hellfire Ray and Firestorm spells. You even get the extremely powerful Fiery Body buff for free. You can actually get multiple copies of this ring, such as, let's say, for Amber and Darren. All you have to do is buy them from your Cleric, basically during Chapter 2 and 3, I believe, or chapter 3 and 5. Lastly, we also have the Steady Finger Ring for yet another boost to ranged touch attack rolls. Now, as for the Bracer slot, you are probably going to want Braces of, of Armor, in this case, plus 8 being the maximum amount to increase Ember's armor class, but as I said before, you can also go with Storm Lord's Resolve Braces that you find in the Blackwater Dungeon, so that Ember gets access to a lot of powerful lightning spells for free. Even if you don't have Ascended Element Lightning, we can convert the damage of these spells to Unholy, as I am just about to show you. Now let's talk about Ember's weapon slots. Ember as an elf can actually equip quite a lot of ranged weapons, from short bows to long bows, crossbows, and so on. Of course, chances are you won't have her attacking the enemy, really. You can, of course, also use the Quarterstaff of the War Mage when casting spells that rely on saving throws. The Quarterstaff of the War Mage will also increase your Hex difficulty class, so keep that in mind. Never mind the plus 4 bonus to spell penetration. So now we have the quick slots, which are very important for all spellcasters, especially Ember. The first one should always go to the Devouring Lust Meta Magic Rod. You can actually get this rod as soon as chapter 3 starts. From the attractive Impulse Crusade Relic, this rod is very powerful, first because it can maximize any spell of any level for maximum damage, 6 times per day, which is huge. It's also going to convert the energy type of the damage into Unholy, 
thus allowing you to bypass certain immunities the enemy might have, such as against lightning damage, as I said before. Second, we have the Greater Quicken Metamagic Rod, that you can find as soon as Chapter 4, with another copy at Chapter 5. In the case of Ember, because she has the Sorceress with Flex Mythic Feet, she will be able to cast her first spell in battle as a swift action, however, for your other spells, such as from the second round onwards, with the access to the Greater Quicken Metamagic Rod, you will be able to, let's say, cast two Hellfire Rays per round for all of the rounds during the battle. The third very powerful Metamagic Rod is the Grandmaster's Rod, that you can get at the end of Finian's quest during Chapter 5. This rod is simply insane, really, as it will both maximize and empower any spell of any level, thus allowing your Hellfire Ray to inflict maximum amounts of damage, especially when you consider we are also going to bolster it for even more damage. It also ignores any spell resistance the enemy might have, which is powerful as well, especially against the Demon Lords. Another decent quick slot item that you might want to use is the Old Grimoire. You can get this by defeating the boss of the Ivory Sanctum area during Chapter 3, and it basically gives you 3 extra slots of level 1 spells, 2 for level 2 spells, and 2 for level 3 spells. Lastly, we also have the Signet of House Vespertilio, which you can use to increase any of Ember's skills of your choice, such as use Magic Device or Persuasion if you have her focused on that. Alright, let's talk now about how to play as Ember with this build. During the early game, your Ember will most likely be spamming the Slumber Hex on most of the enemies you face, really. Especially as early game enemies don't tend to have that high will, so they will fall prey to this spell. Even some late game enemies, at least on core, such as the Apocalypse Locust here, a very late game enemy. I won't let you hurt my friends. An enemy that falls asleep will of course not be able to act, but they will wake up upon being hit. Do remember, however, that a sleeping enemy is a perfect target for the coup de grace ability that all your characters start out with. With this ability, you can pretty much always defeat a sleeping enemy, as you will inflict a massive amount of damage which will be a critical hit, and the enemy will have to make a save or instantly die. Besides that, you can also use early game spells like Scorching Ray, which won't really do that much damage, when not powered by meta magic, but remember that early game enemies don't tend to have high hit points. And remember that you can also use the vulnerability curse hex to remove early game enemy resistance against fire damage, for example. Besides that, for the early game, remember to have Ember also use the glitter dust spell against packs of dangerous enemies. I won't let you hurt my friends. As a blind enemy loses a lot of armor class and also has a much harder time hitting your characters. And of course, if you are on hard and unfair and picked protective luck early, remember to always use it on your characters before battle starts, after all this has infinite uses. While the duration will be just a single round during the early levels, remember that you can use the Cackle ability to indefinitely extend it even out of battle. As you can see here, going from 16 seconds to 21 seconds with just a single casting of Cackle. And of course, you can just keep repeating that. Again and again, really. This also works for the other very powerful hex, Fortune Hex. So my Ember here has 45 seconds of Fortune Hex duration, that you can keep extending it based on your patience, basically. You can also use the very powerful Evil Eye to reduce enemies' armor class, attack bonus or saving throws without a save, basically, for a very hefty minus 4 debuff. Now, from the mid-game onwards, you will have more choices as to what to do with your Ember. Your Scorching Ray will increase in power because of higher caster levels, you will be able to bolster it even, have access to very powerful meta magic such as the Devouring Lust for maximized spells, and one of my favorite uses is to use the very powerful Enervation spell on enemies for an extreme minus 4 negative levels debuff that you will stack. Now, by default, bolstering Enervation won't really change the negative levels damage you inflict. It will, however, give you more castings of the spell by making it level 5 instead of just level 4. And because we have access to the Devouring Lust Metamagic Rod early and also the Sorcerer's Reflex feat decently early, we will be able to inflict up to minus 8 negative levels to the enemy per round, which is crazy powerful, really. Now, by the upper mid to the late game, all you have to do is basically spam Hellfire Ray against dangerous targets, really. Because of the fact we get a very powerful Hellfire Ray as soon as level 13, Ember will be deleting enemies left and right, especially when aided by meta magic rods. 
Of course, you can also use spells like Firestorm and Storm Bulls for decent area of effect damage. Alright, so this was it everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this video on how to build your Ember as a debuffer, buffer and also a heavy damage dealer. As usual, please remember to support the channel if you can by liking the video and subscribing. Also, be sure to comment down below if you think I missed something on how to build Ember or how you like to build her yourself. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends.